हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल आई एम डॉक्टर आदित्य गोडसे कंसल्टेंट ओ बी जी वाइन डिपार्टमेंट मणिपाल हॉस्पिटल ओल्ड एयरपोर्ट रोड हाय आई एम डॉक्टर प्रतिमा कंसल्टेंट गायनेकोलॉजिकल ऑन्कोलॉजी मणिपाल हॉस्पिटल्स ओल्ड एयरपोर्ट रोड बैंगलोर सो वी आर हैविंग दिस डिस्कशन बेसिकली टू क्रिएट अबाउट अवेयरनेस among the general people regarding cancer cervix now why is it essential to be aware about this ca- particular cancer is because uh, this can be picked up at a very early stage even at a pre malignant stage so one should be aware about the facilities or the test available for screening do and uh, also about some symptoms which may give a person a clue and do not ignore the symptoms so to begin with i would like to ask dr pratima what is cervix and what is cancer cervix so cervical cancer is the cancer of the uterine cervix that is the mouth of the uterus okay what are the risk factors one should keep in mind about what are the risk factors which result in cancer cervix so we know that uh, cancer cervix uh, most of the time at least 90% of the time uh, cancer cervix is caused by uh, hpv that is human papilloma virus so cancer cervix is basically divided into two that is hpv dependent and non hpv dependent so now we know that hpv dependent is most commonly caused uh, causing cervical cancer that is about 90% of the time so let us discuss more about the hpv dependent cervical cancer so hpv as we all know it is a human papilloma virus it is a sexually transmitted infection so every men or women in their lifetime at least 70 to 80% of men and women in their lifetime will come across this infection okay they get infected with this infection but it does not mean that all women or men who get infected with this will develop into a cancer but there are certain risk factors where this hpv virus persists that is like you know if somebody is having a multiple sexual partners or if there is a early child marriage if somebody is using oral contraceptive pills or they are exposure to smoking and alcohol or if the body immunity is low like if there are some immunosuppressants or if they are having other sexually transmitted infections like uh, hiv or other uh, sexually transmitted infections so in such condition what happens is the virus stays for a long time and this persistence of virus could lead to some cellular changes in the cervix which further can lead to cancer cervix but we have to remember most of the time like young women or young adults or like with a good immunity they are able to clear this hpv infection most of the time but already as i mentioned these risk factors certain risk factors can predispose them to a cervical cancer later on adding to what dr pratima says uh, i'll just add uh, what should what symptoms a person or a lady can come up to us in the opd one the the lady or uh, can be absolutely asymptomatic or she can have profuse bleeding or she can have prolonged bleeding uh, bleeding post intercourse be- bleeding in between the periods or profuse foul smelling vaginal discharge these are couple of symptoms which may point us to the clue that there is some cervical pathology may not necessarily be malignancy uh, that's where we emphasize the screening so as, not because these patients have these symptoms all all women who have started sexual activity or preferably even before after the age of 21 should be undergoing some f- uh, form of screening method for cervical cancer so dr pratima what are the screening methods for cervical cancer okay so cervical cancer can have uh, like you know we can as you already mentioned it is one of the most uh, preventable and detectable and once if it is detected early it can be prevented and curable so cervical cancer uh, we have a, a screening tests that is pap smear screening test and this screening pap smear or a hpv dna test so in pap smear what happens is we usually like you know in both pap smear and hpv dna testing the method is simple and it is safe uh, just like in a covid uh, test how we use a swab through the on the uh, through the nasal pharynx and we collect some cells and send it for the pathology the same thing here women is positioned in a prone and lithotomy position and the cervix is visualized through the cervix a brush is inserted and the cervical cellular cells are scraped through this either a pap test or a hpv dna test can be done so through the pap smear test it will tell whether the cervix the ch- there is, are there any changes in the cervix due to the hpv infection is the cervix cells are normal or there are any abnormal cells like in you know, a pre malignant stage or there any cancer invasive cancer in that and in the hpv testing what we find is usually uh, if there is a, a persistence or if there is an infection with hpv 
so these are the test which we do routinely for screening and uh, every woman after the age of 25 to 30 years onwards up to the age of 65 to 70 years every 3 to 5 years they have to get this pap smear testing or hpv dna testing in their lifetime just add to what dr pratima said these tests are absolutely painless there are no post uh, there is no care post test the patient can go home immediately walking no uh, doesn't take more than 5 minutes uh, so are you seeing any rise in the hpv uh, infection because we get a lot of women asking for these but um, they are very petrified about the hpv and they want the hpv to be gone away completely from the body is it possible yeah yeah see what happens is most has we already know that hpv is most common like you know uh, in the uh, all age groups basically and especially in young adults most of the 60 to 70% of them are infected with hpv but like you know this infection can wean off through their immunity within 2 to 3 years of uh, uh, getting exposed to the hpv infection so like you know patients whenever they come to us if we are doing hpv infection test yes at least 6 to 12% of the population whom we see who are hpv infected so i uh, we've already discussed about the findings uh, so what could be the um, preventive aspect is there a prevention towards hpv infection one regular screening second would be uh, vaccination and thanks to the government of india which has introduced the hpv vaccine even in the children's uh, immunization schedule so we are now extending it from 9 to 14 years of age and also from 15 to 45 years of age so frankly there are no much side effects uh, i i would like to ask dr pratima if she has noted any side effects if we see in uh, australia or in australia the hpv vaccination was started in a national immunization program since 2006 onwards so we have huge lengthy papers and studies which have shown like you know 10 12 years of follow up they have seen that there is no significant adverse events so these days lot of concerns are uh, happening towards like infertility or premature ovarian failures and etc so there are again certain swedish and danish studies and also there are certain studies which have been uh, published in uh, like you know pediatric and perinatal epidemiology journals so that says that hpv like you know women who are if they have compared like if they have seen that uh, women who have been vaccinated had did not have any premature ovarian failure or infertility but yes if somebody is infected hpv has we all know it is a sexually transmitted infection and also they would be associated with other stis so we know that stis itself will uh, cause uh, infertility like you know pid hmm. general uh, basics like thing they causes pid itself so in such patients who have already been exposed and who already have other variants of uh, stis they could be having infertility but still they have seen that hp vaccination could also prevent that infertility premature ovarian failure even in such patients who have been infected with hpv yes, so that is the benefit of hpv but there are no serious adverse events uh, which have been seen minor like if we have any vaccines with any other vaccines just like flu fever redness swelling or sometimes dizziness so that is why most of the time after giving vaccination we ask the patient to lie down or to sit or we give a vaccine in a sitting position because most they feel dizziness one of the most common thing otherwise not very much a serious adverse events 97% of the side effects are very minor to stress upon uh, one even in spite of uh, vaccination one should not forget the screening the screening method still continue as per the schedule there won't be any changes because one has been vaccinated Uh, about the pregnancy part if a person who has hpv dna can definitely plan a pregnancy so dr pratima does it mean the person who has uh, early cancer or pre malignant they have to undergo removal of the uterus so basically if a woman is desire of pregnancy or if she is very young and then she has developed this cervical cancer so the treatment usually uh, depends based on the what stage is the tumor what is the grade of tumor and what is the extent of the tumor so if it is an early stage then definitely there are a uh, certain uh, surgeries and certain uh, advancements that is called fertility preserving technology fertility preserving surgeries so even in early stage we have certain surgeries called we do cone biopsy coneization or uh, laser surgery that is called as leap which uh, you call it as a laser or a leap uh, surgeries and also we have something called as a trachelectomy 
or in some instances even some times if the tumor is large even we can try with the uh, chemotherapy new adjuvant chemotherapy we can first give chemotherapy and see the disease uh, like you know shrinks down and then we can do a surgery so there are a lot of advancement and technology in gynae oncology so we can do that and still preserve the fertility so to just to uh, uh, summarize that discussion cancer cervix is the most uh, leading type of cancer in india and when uh, it is more important rather to seek help early because this can be prevented and treated with lesser invasions please do take the hpv vaccine screen uh, screen accordingly and screen adequately screen frequently do not ignore the symptoms uh, and seek medical help as early as possible hpv dna and pap smear are the most uh, effective screening met- methods available so please do not ignore the screening methods do take your preventive vaccination and with this i li- i would like to conclude thank you so much